Welcome to the Ascension Academy podcast, where we talk about all things related to healing, spirituality, and the ascension on planet Earth. I am your host, Lauren Denny. I am an energy healer, channeler, medicine woman, singer-songwriter, dancer, and Galactic Federation ambassador. In today's episode, we will be talking with Carol Quinn about the inner Earth beings. Carol Quinn is the owner of Heaven in Earth, a small, intimate crystal boutique that primarily caters to healers and energy workers. She likes to call herself a seeker. She is also a certified crystal healer, master of Christology, angelic Reiki master and teacher, Usui Reiki II practitioner, seraphic wisdom practitioner, seraphic rose pyramid system practitioner, and trained under Charles Virtue as a certified angel practitioner, certified angelic life coach, and certified advanced angel practitioner. Welcome, Carol. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Lauren. I'm so excited to talk Thank to you. you. I'm so excited to have you back. If you guys missed it, we did a whole 90-minute piece on crystals a couple weeks ago. And now we're back to dive more into the inner earth beings and the inner earth council. So, and this is a new topic for me. Carol, what are or who are the inner earth beings and why haven't we heard of them? Um, I think that we have heard of them throughout, throughout the history of mankind, but in each culture, they call it or or say something differently. They may assign goddess status or God status to them. Um, There are many folklores um, throughout throughout the world, but the inner earth beings, the ones that I work with, I refer to them as the inner earth council or the IEC. Um, And that's just my name that I call them. Other people will probably call them different things, but they're made up of, the originals, if you will, or the originating members who came to this planet when we started the experiment, um, the Shambhala, if you will, the the uh, the society in which we all experienced joy and harmony and and peace and um, good health and all of that, Gaia who in and of herself is a sovereign being agreed to have this um, this experiment done on her surface and within her. So when the inner earth council assembled way back in the day, um, they are made up of all sorts of different types of beings. Many of them are off planet, which we would refer to as either star beings or um, Mm. inner earth or I mean, um, interstellars or galactics. Um, the, there are also a lot of other dimensional beings that are part of the IEC also. And they would be wow. in our in our frame of reference, they would be like the angelic realm. There would be the realms where you find Sasquatch and um, wow. dragons and unicorns and fae, the fairies and the fae. Um, those are all dimensional beings that are also participated in the creation of this, which, what I refer to as the IEC. There, the general term of, of inner earth beings could be you know, very much expanded to include all of the little critters and creatures that have evolved over the millions and millions of years that make their home deep into the earth's crust, which I... I've met some of them occasionally, but mainly, primarily, my focus has really been over the last several years is working with the IEC. So are these beings and people that actually live inside the earth underneath us, are they residing there? Their homes are there? Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's like, um, it's a base camp, if you will. And so I was taken down there. I had actually been down in the inner earth many times through meditations um, in the the crystalline grids of the planet. 
And little did I know it was really just outside the chamber of the main kind of meeting room where the IEC members will get together and, and talk business and whatever. When I, when I went down there and was asked to join in the conference room, um, it, that's what we would call a conference room. I was shown in the middle of, of the room was like this holographic projection of a scroll. And the scroll had the original covenant, which they call of the agreement of all of these beings and all of these um, star system members and everyone that came in um, to participate in this experiment, they all signed off on it and, and agreed to it. So okay. at the time, they all were above Earth. And okay, they were when the covenant made, was made. Yeah. And they were all creating the different um, things as we know as trees and seas and animals and and humans and all these things were, were going on at the time. And then over time, um, humans broke the covenant. Surprise. Right? Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And um, because of that, how I understand it, again, this is through my interpretation of what I hear, they chose to go underground to still monitor the situation because they were still responsible for the covenant and kind of see, but, you know, it's a... Part of the experiment was this free this idea of free will and and you and how what would you have to do if you were to experience polarity in its extremes to bring it back to unity consciousness? So that's kind of this grand experiment thing that was going on. Mm -hmm. So per the way I understand it is per Gaia, Gaia requested that all the IEC members and representatives, ambassadors, if you will, stay on the planet. Ah. to monitor the situation so they went underground per se and developed you know they're they're very high tech they're beyond our, our even comprehension of how how we could possibly oh. live and they have been there the whole time since since they were quote unquote driven or chose to go down below um but they they leave they come to the surface they go off clan and back to their home systems or hope their star system home, home. They, they go to the yeah, ships that are based around the planet. Um, mm -hmm. what, what I was told by the uh, head of the IEC, uh, she, I call her Aruku. She says Aruku. that all IEC members are members of the Galactic Federation, but not all Galactic Federation members are IEC members. Because since the assumption oh. Section of the planet and this and this plan, if you will, um, the Galactic Federation has brought on other star nations. Yes, right? as they go and spread the word of what's going on in the universe, and more and more people will join the Galactic Federation. But here on the planet, the um. IEP is the one that's kind of helping Gaia move through what she's moving through right now. And, and then again, be the original founders um, or the original, the originals who were here upon the inception of the, uh, the inception of the inception of the experiment, if that makes any sense. Yes, absolutely. So I definitely want to ask you about the different groups, the different beings that are make up in earth. But before we get into that, can you explain a little more what you mean about the Earth experiment? What what was unique or different about Earth compared to other planets? What I know you had mentioned the free will, um, kind of experimenting with going into separation and polarity and then coming back to unity. Could you just explain that a little bit more? What is this experiment on Earth? The idea behind, you know, source. The source is, people call him God, um, creator, spirit, whatever you want to call it. They, this idea that to experience yourself, you experience the polarities of yourself. So you have this perfected being who, I don't know, I don't know if that being is just bored or that she's really <laughs> what? There was this idea, and I think that there. Okay, hold on a second. Aruka is super talented because she's like here. Before Earth was even created, there were many um, turbulent times throughout many planets, throughout our galaxy and the universe, and 
it all, there was a common theme that ran through it all. It was all about power and it was all uh -huh. about um, lording over other people, other resources, um, hoarding, those kinds of ideas. The same things we experienced here on the planet. But it, it had become very destructive in many ways where there were several, um, I'm seeing like several planets completely annihilated and destroyed. Stripped yeah. of their minerals, um, their beings taken off to use as what we would consider slavery um, and those kinds of things. There reached a point, and there was also, you know, there's obviously a lot of very benevolent uh, planets and star systems beings out there that saw what was going on and knew because they had maintained their uh, pure channel to source energy that you could have a society or a civilization that worked in unison with each other without having to lord over anything. That, that working in cooperation and that unity consciousness idea that they are really the law of one, which they firmly believed in. And many of the, I mean, I would say, she's saying all of the IEC members are hold that as a main tenant of their particular race is the law of one. So they sought out and however they found Gaia to agree and however that worked, um, they did find a space called that we call earth where they could prove to other nations other star nations that this idea of the law of one really does work that you can bring together all sorts of different um, races and dimensional beings and with all sorts of different ideas skill sets belief systems but still work together in unity and harmony and this is the covenant that um, was brought about um, in agreement where all were to work together in unity without harm to others and, and all of these kinds of things. Um, it, it was an idea to prove and, to, you know, to up the numbers of the Galactic Federation kind of thing, too. Like, <laughs> you know, look, we've got this great experiment. Look how this works. We can help you with this. We've had experience. Do you remember back in the day of all these these things here and look at how it's, it's working here? So um, that's what... I'm understanding is what she's saying is how this all came about. Um, okay. Any more details than that? She's not really saying. Um, I just see, I see everyone just being really excited that they, finally they could take in theory because each, mm -hmm. each star race had their own idea of what unity consciousness looks like. Right. I mean, we oh, well. different languages. You speak French. I speak Spanish. They speak Italian. We we describe things differently. Um, yeah. We may call it spaghetti noodle, spaghetti noodle here, but they call it something different there. And mm -hmm. but the idea beyond the words uh, that was spoken is the concept and the energy of this unity consciousness of this this law of one. Mm -hmm. And it was important. Um, it was important for these star races that became members of this IEC that I call the IEC to sort of prove and put into action the law of one. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it worked for a while, but then it didn't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here we are today. Yeah. Uh, they, part of this, so this is maybe kind of getting a little off off the specific question you asked, but part of this was this process of um, when they went under, so humans broke the tenants and these, the, the how, if, what Arugu told me is if you want to understand what happened, mm -hmm. why we were driven downtown, read your fairy tales. Go oh, to what wow. you are attracted to and read them. This is what happened. So you, you know, you go to the Greek mythology and read about you uh -huh. know, the fight, the the fights between the gods and the humans. Or, I'm drawn uh -huh. to the Celtic um, traditions, and so uh, the Tuath Dedanon um, are considered to be the gods of the sky that came down and were great healers and great seers and sages. They fought with the humans, kind of lost, and they were driven down underground. So, uh -huh. um, but they still come up. And they will still work with humans who are willing to respect them and 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 uh, honor their ways. Um, 
Mm -hmm. So she says, if you want to understand what happened, go back to your fairy tales, to your mythology, and you can oh. see into it behind the words, what really happened. Um, and mm -hmm. it, one of the, when she was first explaining this to me, um, well, actually it was one of, it wasn't her. It was another one of my skulls. I call Kelbara, who is a dragon. Um, he he played out a scene for me um, and explained to me this is one of the breaking points between humanity and the other realms was the mythology that you see in our societies of the of the dragon slayer right um, of the, the great knight who goes and slays the dragons that was breaking the covenant that yeah breaking, and even though we as humans yeah. Oh, but I'm protecting my family and my land and we're mm -hmm. being great, strong human, it broke the it broke the covenant. And so yeah. it's just ideas like this. And again, you can find out more of these things that have happened by going and referring back to folk tales, fairy tales, mythology. Um, and that's when then she's saying like the frequency of humans shifted. So uh, we got it, lower vibe, I assume. Yes, we like yeah. to zoom down, and all of a sudden, we don't see the dragons. We don't mm -hmm. see the dragons. We don't see the star people. We don't see them anymore because our frequency fell because we broke the covenant. Then, I don't know if it's, it was like a you know an addendum to the covenant that said <laughs> this. You won't be able to see us anymore, or if it was just like this evolutionary thing. I'm not really sure. Yeah. But in in their terms of how they're explaining to me right now is that's what happened, um, mm -hmm. and then we find ourselves where we are now, where yeah, the only reference point we have to the creation of this planet um, is through our folk tale and our mythology, which we were taught. And ingrained to believe is all yeah. made up and not true. Yeah. So when what Arugu also said was uh, many humans, she didn't put a number to it, many, and I, I would say if millions, if not hundreds of millions of people on this planet have at their essence star lineage, right? Like they were star people that mm -hmm. were involved in the beginning or their their direct descendants of the beginning members, the ambassadors of the IEC. So they were set up as foot soldiers. She calls them foot soldiers, <laughs> so, which meant they walked on the planet. They walked on the surface of the planet as humans to kind mm -hmm. of monitor things. And even though we as humans in these lifetimes, in the beginning, we were aware of what we were doing, right? The ones, that, mm -hmm. the people that were up there doing it because they weren't, they hadn't incarnated that many times on the surface of the planet. So they were still very much in Connected. tune yeah. with their roots, with who mm -hmm. they were and the magic that they held. And, and again, she's like, look at your mythology, you, the, the magical druids and all of these people mm -hmm. who still, the Merlin, the archetype of Erlen, um, still very much in touch with their roots. But each time they reincarnated in our linear human sense of the thing, the yeah. more karmic degree they accumulated and the less remembering they had. And she referred to it as, it's similar to like your clogged arteries, you humans. <laughs> You know, it's like because you can't it's get the flow of information gets kind of slowed down and kind of skunked mm -hmm. up because of that. So um, she said, which was so interesting, and this is a little off topic, but I think it's going to yeah. explain why a lot of people are the way they are now. Um, many people, again, she didn't give me a number. She said many. I'm guessing. It's my guess of, of tens of millions to hundreds of millions of people on this planet have spent the last several lifetimes, as we define it as humans, mm -hmm. just trying to clear up the karma, just yeah. trying to clean up themselves because they knew that everything was coming down to the wire during this time that we now are on the planet. So they have been working really hard. Now, okay. she also said, which was blew me away because it just validated a lot of stuff for me. Um, 
people don't really talk about it, but I know people are aware of it. This concept of concurrent lifetimes where we are like you and I are here talking to each other is Lauren and Carol, mm -hmm. but I am aware personally, I'm aware of at least three other lifetimes currently on the planet. That is me. Mm -hmm. I'm oh. this young adult in the Fiji islands, helping my aunt and uncle at their food shack. I'm an old woman with a flower cart in Mexico city. And I'm a woman in Italy helping her parents run an olive farm. I, mm -hmm. I, that's a reality to me because I can see details of their life. I can tap yeah. into it. What she explains to me is this is many of the people are doing this because it that's like four lifetimes in one span yeah. versus coming back, going, you know, doing the whole uh, thing from birth to death, birth to death, birth to you death. Can clear was, more at you one know, time. Four lifetimes going on at yeah. once. It's and you neat. have one lifetime that are that's the concurrent lifetimes. One of them's kind of the the lead, the mm -hmm. lead clear or the one that's awake, the the most awake, if you were or aware. So that person is able to help clear the debris from the other lifetimes. So that's why a lot of people are really confused on why they're overreacting to situations or yeah. emotionally. Just they're helping con clearing concurrent lifetimes. And yeah. she said. Um, there's a lot of the divine counterparts running around too that you may or may not be aware of. I don't call them twin flames mm -hmm. because that has- I all don't like that. Yeah, word either. But um, the divine counterparts are running around too. Again, this idea of trying to get it all clear cleared as quick as possible. But the divine counterparts are doing the opposite of what you are currently doing because it's usually this polarity thing. Uh, the- Divine counterparts are usually experiencing the opposite side of the ball, if you will. Yeah. So counterparts are clearing similar things. You've got divine counterparts running around doing the opposite to try to get this stuff cleared as quick as possible. So when they come back in this lifetime, it's easier for them to connect back to their roots and to why they're even doing this. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting um, and an yeah, interesting that's... aspect of of how the IEC has always been working with us because there are so many yes. foot soldiers on the, walking on the earth right now that we've been interacting with that are really tied to the IEC, aware or not aware of it, but they mm -hmm. are. So why is there, it seems like there's kind of a lot of focus on right now, like what's happening right now and trying to clear this karma now, um, wanting to, I think, as you said, with the covenant, restore the covenant. Is that correct? That they're trying to bring balance and peace and harmony to the planet right now in our lifetimes? Yes. So I asked that question. I said, why, like, why now? Like, why, yeah. why did you open the portal now? Why are we all becoming so aware of this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And she said, um, she said, you humans use things like statistics and probability to predict the future. Yeah. Uh, future trends in the marketplace or whatever. We use, we have our own analysis that we use. And a lot of it is dealing with astronomy and astrology. And so the time uh. they can see, and they have been being able to predict this for thousands of years, that there are cycles that end and start and we're in that's that ending and starting of a new cycle thing which of course would be See. pisces aquarius and all that other stuff the mayan calendar yeah. ended, um in 2000 whatever that was 12 was it or i think so i think 2012 i think um, um and additionally she she said based because this is an arcturian based on our analysis <laughs> the analytical they are seeing Again, the way they, they deal with time, very different than we do. So there are alternative timelines that can be constantly playing out. And they can see and run potential timelines. Yes. And she mm -hmm. says, based on this, the, based on her analysis. Based on my analysis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's giving me, I can see her giving me a look like. Um, <laughs> I'm like, sorry, just playing. <laughs> she knows. She, um, 
that uh, we are, how did she word it? All of the telltale signs are there that this could be an Atlantean catastrophe time again. When if we I, don't course correct. Yes, that, that there's a potential timeline out there. That That's why they're kind of really trying to, I mean, I think back in the day, like she said that really I've been being contacted by them since 2012, but I'm hmm. very human and very like whatever, I'm not paying attention. And they, yeah. they were doing that with everyone. They're reaching out to trying the people to who have these agreements, but we're all like doing our thing, but now yeah. there's a sense of urgency because yeah. um, exponentially the timelines are changing and shifting all the time because of choices we're making as a conscious collective and, mm -hmm. you know, our governments, our countries, um, even individuals can shift entire timelines based on their actions. Um, yeah. So we're kind of in that space right now. And I'll give you a really... Yeah. And this kind of will go back to the whole timeline and when this started. But just last night, I I really never watch it. But for some reason, I decided to watch a show called um, Last Week Tonight by John Oliver. He, he okay. kind of, okay. yeah, well, he, anyways, one of his stories and the reason that like, it caught my eye, and this is how they get your message. They may not actually knock on your door and walk in and say, watch this, but they'll proud to do things yes there's something called um it's so it's south of hawaii in the in the pacific ocean it's called the clarion clipperton zone or huh. the ccz never heard of it it's yeah. fifteen thousand feet deep to the bottom of the sea and it's the most pristine area of the planet in the ocean and has they are discovering thousands of new species every day many wow. of them have Many of them have been responsible for bringing cures to different human diseases. Well, one, uh, I won't cuss on this show, but what? what you gentleman, can cuss on my show. What <laughs> asshole uh, found like these nodules at the bottom of the sea there. And they're like, like the size of golf balls and they contain minerals that can be used for batteries. So he's convinced, he, he's, he puts himself up as the next Elon Musk. And oh. he wants to harvest these nodules at the bottom of this very pristine area. And mm -hmm. he's interviewing, he's being interviewed by people and they're like, oh yeah, it's just like going and picking up golf balls on the bottom of the sea. He's got these big machines that take and scrape these balls out, pick up the sand and all of these life mm -hmm. forms live among those nodules. And at the bottom of the sea, there's destroying life. And then you... If you can imagine, they pull up and there's a silt, they dump back onto the ocean and it creates these plumes that are like suffocating, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was told when I first became aware of bottom of the sea civilizations, I was told back in 2016 that the actions we are now taking are affecting them and they have to step up now. Because mm -hmm. before they were like, yeah, stupid humans. Think of yeah. Aquaman, right? The Aquaman movies that have come out recently. It's yeah. kind of that idea. It's like, don't let the humans be assholes up here. Just leave us alone. But now that's not, yeah. that's not it anymore. And they did some sort of trial study 26 years ago, I think, um, unsettling the bottom of the ocean there. And it still hasn't settled. It's still So we're destroying. Yeah. And there's a potential for complete catastrophic um events to, to happen if this is allowed so blah 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 yeah but anyways it's interesting because we were coming on today that that would be presented to me as and that's aruku going that's one of the reasons yeah we are really like trying to get people to wake up and to connect and let allow us to get back up on the planet to start doing the work that we were here to do so yeah. Yeah. I'm getting, I just got chills as you said that, but it's kind of like now or never, like, it just feels like, okay, we could cross the point of no return where we completely destroy ourselves. Right. And I, I also had the sense from Galactic Federation that after, you know, World War II, when we released these nuclear bombs, that they also stepped up their presence because before it's like, okay, you know, destroy earth, free will, 
But when we do nuclear bombs, that that frequency and that energy, I mean, even not just physically, but like the energy that it sends out sends shock waves across the universe and it affects the other planets like as far out. So it's like, okay, you know, maybe Earth would have been allowed to destroy themselves because they have free will, but now it's affecting our homes and our planets and we have to step up our presence and help course correct so it doesn't, you know, kill off. I mean, we, they, not like they wanted Earth to kill themselves, but with the free will, they weren't allowed, they weren't allowed, is my understanding, to interfere until that you're affecting our homes. We have to help course correct, help raise the vibration of the planet, help heal the planet. Um, so I feel like, yeah, it's similar now we're affecting their homes, whether it's under, you know, sea or under the ground, which I want to ask you all about this, you know, where they live and who these different people are. But so I'm feeling that sense, yeah, the sense of urgency. We don't want this planet to be destroyed. So it's like help, you know, all angles, help, help, help. Now's the time they're doing the analysis like if we don't step up now, we're on a path for destruction of the earth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that answer is why now, why the urgency, why they're making themselves known, you know, both galactic and then inner earth and why they're wanting to come to the planet and come to the surface to work with us and help because we really are all in this together and we're a family and what happens on earth affects the people inside the earth and affects the rest of the cosmos. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's a fantastic introduction. I would love to hear more about these different civilizations. So you said they started contacting you around 2012 and you weren't really listening. And then I think later around 2015, 2016, they yeah. started introducing you to the different, some of the different groups. Is yeah. That right. Yes. Um, in, in April of 2015, I was meditating and a lot of this, my knowledge is coming through crystals. crystals. That's why I'm just, crystals have rocked my world. Cool. I was meditating with a crystal and I heard my name, I heard them say something and I asked, what is that? And they said it again. Um, and they said, that is your name in the other realms. That's how we know you. And, mm -hmm. um, she said, well, they said specifically that who you are. <laughs> and so the nickname it's like a five or six syllable name but in shorter terms they called me suki so okay that's really cool i don't know what to do with any of that information so the next year in, in april of um 2016 i was meditating with another crystal and i was shown or it, it came to my awareness um that there were these math civilizations that lived in the bottom of the oceans oh, and God. That they were using the fissures in the at the crust of the earth for heat and energy and electricity and all those things that they could do. Wow. Uh, and they show that the mountains at the bottom of the ocean have life within them. There's life that lives. And these oh. and so that's all so I get that awareness, like, okay. And I'm told in through this meditation that they are very peaceful people. They just leave the planet alone at the top and they just have their beautiful life down there. Um, and so the next month, so this was in fact, this was in April, 2016. In May of 2016, we did a family trip to Oregon and I had bought a crystal and I brought her. I'll do a little show and tell. Oh, yay. How gorgeous. Yeah. She's a beautiful <gasps> animal. Wow. She's my master crystal. Her name is Morgana. And she does, she harnesses the energy of all of the mythology of Morgana and Morvan the Fae. So, oh. but I noticed when I was out there, um, we, we stayed right at the ocean. Um, and we went on to a photo shoot with all of our crystals we bought on the ocean and everything. And, and I feel a longing. And I felt really guilty for taking her home with me back to Denver. Mm -hmm. And if it, it, she's like, no, I, I'll go with you. I, I'm just longing for my home. 
And so I meditated with her and she immediately took me down to what is called, and I know it as the ASEAN temple, A-C-I-A-N. That is the temple uh, or the civilization that I am aware of, that I am a part of. And this is a, a massive crystal city at the bottom of the ocean. As far as I can tell, I don't have an exact location, but it's off the Celtic shelf in the Atlantic Ocean. But the city okay. is so high that on the higher levels, you can see the sun and the moonlight coming in through. Oh, and really? The, and the window, you, you don't have windows per se. It's just the crystal. So you can see out and see the beautiful. It, it just It's just breathtaking time every time I see it. Wow. But she takes me into this chamber and... Um, that you kind of adjust from coming down from the pressure and you, you breathe air when you're in this temple, when you're in the civilization. And there's this great room that I've spent a lot of time in. It's just huge with all of these tables, with all of these beings. And they looked, um, some of them looked very human. Some of them looked not human at all. And there were all sorts of hybrids in between it, all different kinds. And what she explained, she said, this is a kind of a federate, con confederation of different um, star races and dimensional beings that are working together on behalf of Gaia. And their focus, um, let me see if I can remember. Their focus yeah. of the ASEAN temple is um, environmentalism, sustainability, healing, and agriculture. So oh, these God. beings from all over the universe and within all of the realms within Gaia were coming here to, to meet these goals of their own thing. So oh. she took me up these elevators, if you will, way, way high into this, way high into the city. And there's just these hallways and the hallways are dark. Um, and there's these round, you know, the, the like, arched do wooden doors and she walks up to one and as you're walking by you see these things written or those like slats written with all these things words or something on it or scribbles or whatever and she comes to one and i see my name carol on it oh my god and I <laughs> of all these other names but i can't pronounce them and i don't remember them the only thing i remember was anna a-n-a -A. Hmm. um and with the other ones, I didn't understand how to read them or whatever. Well, she takes me in and it's a small room. Uh, there's a bed and there's a desk. And then you, you're you able to look out into the ocean because the wall is a big crystal wow. window, if you will. And on the desk is Morgana. Oh, and what my God. <laughs> she told me is when you come of age in this civilization, you are given a crystal to carve in the likeness of the city that you come from as an identification mark or, mm -hmm. you know, like a connection to that civilization. And then it drops through and finds you in all the different lifetimes where you work with her. And so the names on that door were all of my different lifetimes that I've worked with her. Oh my God. Isn't that crazy? So apparently this is what the ASEAN temple looks like and it's hard to tell but wow. you can see all these like, little windows these are this is called an elestial but it looks wow. like a temple. um so I'm given this information and I'm like mm -hmm. whoa that is so whoa. cool and and I do work and I began to start working and going down there more often and we would do different kinds of healing ceremonies and I was associated with oh. I felt connected with the Ruby Ray. And so what I saw when we were down there is um, people break off and they have like these rows and they're different colors of whatever ray they're working with. And so anyone wearing this Ruby and gold row would go off to this conference room and meet and do whatever we're in charge of. And mm -hmm. people wearing a green one would go off there or whatever. Um, and I think in my crystal talk, I showed you, uh, or I talked about Seven, who is the connection between the ACN temple and me. So she just sits there and watches me and monitors me. Goes, oh, please go up to the planet and help her. <laughs> her at Carol before she starts <laughs> doing stupid things again. That was, that was amazing. And then, so go forward the next year. So we're now looking at March, 2017. 
Um, and I am in meditation through, I think actually I was being attuned uh, is when I first met them through a class. And then I started working with them. I was introduced to two Sasquatch. Cool. And one's name is Cookie, but I call him Cookie. Because <laughs> don't call me Cookie because it's spelled K-U-K-I. Because in your language, Cookie is Cookie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom Cookie and then his partner Hashane. And they're part of a clan who um, is responsible for the um, protection of something called the Rainbow Lake. So they took me down to the Rainbow Lake, which is inner earth. And they took me down into this open cave. And then we walked behind these boulders and we go down this tunnel. And then you open up into the, just like you see in the movies. It's just, there's this beautiful lake that um, actually fluoresces different colors and the colors will change. And they explain it's based on the plankton or something that is there. Sure. You, there is natural light that is feeding down there. And there's a bunch of Sasquatch just hanging around. And this, wow. they, you know, they did some things with me with the water and stuff. And that was all grand and really amazing. And I started to work with that. And then two months later, in May of 2017, I was in a meditation to go work with the, the two of them. Um and we went down there, and there's this white Sasquatch. And, oh, and I'm like, who is this guy? And they <laughs> said, we refer to him as the Lord Master of the Rainbow Lake. And I'm like, okay. And um, there was some Sasquatch in the corner, and they were drumming. They had, And it was cool to see how they built their how they oh, built cool. their drums. But the Lord Master, this is the mud from the edge of the rainbow lake and peed on it <gasps> and then started walking toward me and and i'm like yeah. not because one of the things hashane would do she's the she's the healer of the two of them um she would get mud and she would spread it on different parts of my body and that stuff. makes sense i know that mud is healing with all the minerals from the earth yes and plus yeah. this water is really just a different yeah, kind I of water but I'm like, I'm sorry, you are not spreading urinated mud on me. No. <laughs> he kind of winked at me and he walked away and he gave that mud to um, the Sasquatch that were drumming. And I don't know what they do with it. But then he did come back and he did pick up some mud and he did spit on it. And then he rubbed it on my third eye and my <gasps> eyes and dragged it onto my chest. And he said that he was releasing my bindings because that's what I requested him to do. Which, of course, is all at a high level, which I don't understand. But as it turns out, he is one of those really high dimensional light beings that um, he's Gosh. not from a star race. He's like a um, referred to as the mission realm. They're like mm -hmm. the angelic realm, but they're different. But they're, they're these really high vibe light beings that have very specific things that they do. They're very, um, they're specialists in whatever they do. And apparently he's a specialist in releasing bindings. But he said, I appear to the Sasquatch as a Sasquatch because that's what they can relate to. Yeah. But he uses Rainbow Lake as a portal, as one of the portals to, to enter Earth. And he I doesn't see. come to Earth the surface that often. Uh, but he did for me to do what I needed to do so I could move forward with that. So I'm like, great, dude. Um, he's like, I'm here. If you need anything, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You are fully capable of everything. But if you know you want to go have a beer or a cup of tea, we can go do that. Go I'm hang out. Meditation form. If you just want to run ideas by me, I'm here for you. I said that's fine, but I'm not calling you Lord Master. So <laughs> I <I'm> call <calling> you <laughs> me. <laughs> so funny. So then, now, so th then again, now I'm meeting Sa Sasquatch, and to me, Sasquatch is very much like um, humans, and, and that's a, just a story that will come up. But um, Sasquatch are star beings, and but some of them have been on the surface or have been on the planet for so long that they are more earthy in their vibration. Uh. And, not as high vibe as some of the, the stellar uh, Sasquatch that I, I left through a gateway. Um, okay, so cool. They're very in tuned with the portals and the, the inner earth beings and the IEC and all of that. Um, and that's why no one can ever really catch them because they're shapeshifters and they can use 
wormholes or portals or whatever you call, you want to call them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was interesting. And then, so September of 2021, so this is like going four years ahead of now. And in the meantime, I'm down in the AC and Temple and I'm working with the Sasquatch and I'm working with Charlie. Mm -hmm. You know, I have another star being that comes in. He calls himself Orion. Um, and coming from that area of, mm -hmm. of the star systems, um, and I'm working with them in meditation and helping them. They're helping me open up and understand how that stuff. And then the, the quick road to hell happens in September of 2021 um, when Arthur comes into my life. Yeah. And I would have never, and Arthur, I introduced in my crystal class, but he is a, um, and the lighting's not good in here, but he is a citrine rainbow um, skull. Uh, is considered to be a traveler by the way he's carved. Now, I would have never been able to afford him. He was way expensive. Mm -hmm. But it was my 60th birthday at the time. And my sister, my little rich sister, said, I'll buy it for you. Oh, how lucky. Oh, she's not into any of this stuff. She had no idea the can of worms she owned. Oh, um, she's a <laughs> so she, on a higher level, mm -hmm. was allowing me to keep moving forward on my path. So Arthur became um, my, I guess, my main drug dealer as far as getting <laughs> skulls. Because in the next like year and a half, um, I, I just collected so many skulls were coming in and he mm -hmm. kept telling me it's the round table. We're, we're putting together a round table, a high council for you. Wow. He does, he is, um, from other people that have channeled him and worked with him. He is Arcturian. He does represent the folklore mythology of, of King Arthur. Um, he is anchoring in what we as humans would refer to as the Christ consciousness, this mm -hmm. idea of unconditional love and acceptance and forgiveness. So that's his tenets mm -hmm. and the souls that he brought, brought in, again, um, all being... At the time, I didn't know this, but all being IEC members coming in in various forms and inhabiting into these skulls to help me understand what was going on. Um, I think one of the one of the big he said, "My turn to talk about My me." To talk is um, that in in December of 2022, I got this guy, and he looks like a monkey with this little hat. Yeah, he's a trolleite is the mineral that he's called. And his name, Siikwanawa, I call him Siikwa. Bottom line, quick story is he is a uh, galactic ambassador. He, he negotiates uh, treaties and relationships and interactions mm. with galactics on galactics. And cool. he came into my life because him and I were going to manage a very specific gateway or a uh yeah a gateway he okay. calls them gateways if they're different than portal yeah it is different because it's different okay well he's saying he uses that term because uh we control how who and how comes through this gateway more like a gate right that opens yes. and closes, controls yes. that makes sense so okay. he um he actually gives me the symbol of the asian temple and as it turns out, this gateway, how it's pictured to me is, you know, you just got your like regular kind of fencing. It's like um, brick and and the dark black metal. But I could never see a gateway in between. But he's like, this is the gateway. I'm like, I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. um, and he gives me the symbol of the Asian temple. And he says, this is the key to open it. But I'm like, still don't see the gate. Hmm. And as it turns out, my daughter is extremely connected, and mm -hmm. but she's just not there to talk about it. She will with me, but nobody else is like, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, so whenever I get a skull, I like sit with a skull and just do it. In the meantime, when I just opened him up, it's okay. When I open him up, they're, they're just like, don't forget his part. Um, there was this, even when I bought him, he came out of Brazil and he was being packed in a box. I could feel this presence behind me of a lot of beings just standing right there. And I didn't know what that was. 
And when I opened him up and when he got home, they, they were like, you could almost feel them breathing on me. Um, and so basically what they were, these were beings that were waiting to be let through the gateway. And they had to wait till Shaigwa got there to show sure. me how to do this. Uh -huh. And he's insistent that we've got to open this gateway. And I'm like, I don't see a gate. Where's I the gate? Us. I don't see the gate, dude. And I give the skull to my daughter and she goes into her, into another room and she's meditating with it. And as she's meditating with it, this crystal line, it's all made of crystal gate appears and it has this lock on it. And that's where I do the symbol of the ACN temple and it opens up. And then he explains, yeah, well, I forgot that part. Your daughter is the light bearer. She had to connect with the skull in order to activate the gate. And then yeah. now I can open and, and shut it at will. And so I will wait for him to tell me. And I actually just opened it up um, a couple of days ago when there's an accumulation of beings or certain beings need to get to the planet. Mm -hmm. These are all galactics. They're coming in to work. Um, and that's why I know Sasquatch is also a, is really a star being because one of the first times I opened up, there was a whole bunch of, oh my gosh, it's Sasquatch. Sasquatch is coming through and all sorts of different kind of beings, you know, little tiny ones to big ones, to things you recognize to just literally wisps of energy coming through. Um, and then we know to shut it up and he stands guard etherically and that part of me stands on in the astrals mm -hmm. at that date also. And then there is also uh, yeah. another um, galactic being that stands on the other side of the gate, kind of like, I'm sorry, this is the wrong gate. You need to go this way. Mm -hmm. um, so these gateways, and according to Shiikwa, anyone that connects with him um, on a deep level, which several people have, he will help them manage their own personal stargates. Because we wow. each have our own very specific frequency and our agreements yeah. are to bring certain specific frequencies into the planet. And so he helps manage that, the, the galactic entries, if you will, of those frequent, those frequency beings that match that person who's serving as a gateway. Um, and wow. he also is the one that gave me a sequence of numbers that I was told was my ascension codes, that those were the codes that would activate my awareness of the gifts that I carry in the Asian mm -hmm. temple that will be brought into physical form here on the planet. So um, many people saw him also as a Mayan astronaut, if anyone's familiar with that. Uh, again, mythology of the Mayan civilization seeing astronauts coming in. He was mm -hmm. part of that interface between galactics and humans at that time when uh, they were spotting them there. And so then, then in October of 2023, so just, you know, last year, I started holding skull parties, what I call them <laughs> skull parties, where Arthur was asking, you know, I want you to set me and such and such out in a circle. And these are the people I want you to invite over. And what he was doing is he was the group, which I refer to as the high council. Arthur refers to himself as the high council and the humans he refers to as the round table. So he would call, he would say, we have to call the round table together. Hmm. And he would tell me which skulls come in. And then we would sit around and he would dust our frequencies. Um, okay. Not, again, not knowing what's going on, just knowing that I'm listening to yeah. the train scarved like a human. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I'm crazy. Who cares, right? <laughs> in February of this year, um, February 8th to be exact, I uh, went to see a friend of mine to do like a cleanup healing. Like she was doing some house. I said, just do some housekeeping. Um, <laughs> or just make sure I'm nice and squeaky clean. So she does yeah. all that. Um, at the end, she, she steps back about four feet from my feet. And she's almost walking out the door of her office. And she's like, she said, they're telling me to hold on to your horses. There's going to be a blast of energy coming through. And apparently what she did is she opened up a portal in the ground. And that energy came up and went through my, through my uh, feet and then out through my crown. And when I, when we looked at that afterwards and, um, 
I immediately knew that, I mean, they were telling me we're the inner earth council. We are the, the, the originals. We are the finally, finally through your humanness, you are in a place that you can hear us and you are ready to receive what we want you to do. And it's ready for you. Like you are now ready to step into what you said you were going to do. Wow. Uh, and so then that just, that just started this whole thing because everything started to make sense. Like all of these skulls with all of these beings that came in were all part of the IEC but they were gently trying to attune me and other people up into the energy because literally yeah. when we were done with that healing session, I got up and I, I felt like my, my whole solar plexus area got really tight. And I'm like, what um, is this? I didn't understand what it was. And Danny, the, my friend who was doing this, um, she suddenly started feeling well and she was sick for three or four days, like detoxing majorly. So with all that energy, that energy yeah. class was really hard on her was not as hard on me because I live with the skulls. Yeah. And they've been getting ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there were other energy um, adjustments that were being made that was just for me that were related to the high C. So I was not having to react as, as violently. Yeah. So, Bottom line is um, now with this new blast of energy and the information coming through, all of the skulls then were did, if you will, to the full, full on IEC frequencies. And then I could call a round table of the people in, and then we attuned to the frequencies of the IEC. And, and what's really cool is they were, they gave us a symbol um, a sigil, if you will, um, that we embed, we etherically embedded into our Alta Major chakra mm -hmm. where you hold all of your cast gifts. And this um, is seen as, to them and to the other realms, this is kind of seen as your marker. You know, it's like if you were a, mm -hmm. a sorority. Yeah, and you, were, and you have a little symbol. Yeah, yeah so this is kind of the group gang sign if you will cool um, it's just an identification marker but it Matters. also is also uh, the way it looks oh okay they're saying i can show you what the symbol is okay um so this this cool. is our symbol but what's interesting is that thing in the middle yeah like a dragon's eye they show a dragon's eye so you can open and shut oh. your portal um flow of information to them if you still want to do it they will also close it down if they see you as a human starting to struggle with something like you, something dramatic happened or something very emotional happened and you're kind of all frazzled. They will shut that down because the energy is so high um, yeah. that it would just blow your circuits in addition to doing what you're doing with your emotional body. If that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, but everyone, the, the 12 of us... Um, since the attunements um, to the IEC have seen very interesting expansion of gifts and shifts in what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, and it's, it's beautiful to hear the stories. Like some of them, they don't really know what they're, you know, they're like, I, I don't know, but they're, I know that they're doing something because they're just carrying the light. Um, they're carrying mm -hmm. the frequency within them. So even just going to the grocery store, they're very embedding, embedding like a snail's trail, like you yeah. know, like a trail of a snail. You can see that um, is what they're doing. And then the, um, I guess the, I can talk about the portal I built in the backyard, or do you want to do you want to do that as a separate conversation? Or yeah, let's do that. Well, let's get to that in a minute. Can I? I just okay, Derek. I want to clarify for our viewers just about the different councils and the members and the groups because I had to write it down before we started so just to clarify for everybody so there is the inner earth council which is is it all of the inner earth beings are a part of this council not all of them those that are part of the original covenant of the planet okay and, and because they live in the earth does not mean that they are of the earth. 
a vast okay. majority of them are what we would consider to be galactics or interstellars. Okay, gotcha. So like the Arcturians, Palladians, Syrians, the Dronomans, yeah, okay. all those guys are part of the IEC, but they maintain residence in the Earth, but in Constiction, yeah, off planet too. Okay, so there's a lot of different beings in the Earth. There's what we would call extraterrestrials. Um, there's the beings that were here at the origination of Earth, too. Um, and those are the inner Earth council, then. The, the beings that were a part of this covenant, right? Yes. The reason... Um... I, this is just my name, Inner Earth, because they live under the, the crust of the Earth right now. Yeah. But at the time, they were above the Earth. And they, so if you can imagine um, all your ETs and all of your dragons and unicorns and trees and fish, I mean, they're all like playing together and they're coming together in all these different realms together. So because... I refer to them as inner earth it does not mean that they originated from the inner earth. That's just where they live. It's where they live now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. as, as opposed to saying like the Galactic Federation, which we view as a ship off planet circulating, you know, yes. circling our planet. So I, I refer to it as the IEC because these are the people, the beings that are currently entering the planet from inside earth mm -hmm. versus outside earth. Right. Okay. So there's this inner earth council, which were, they were originally living on the surface of the earth and had to go underground once humans started acting out. And so they were here at the origination of earth went underground and they've been here the whole, whole time. We've lost touch with them. We're not aware of their presence, but they've been underground monitoring the situation. They live, they have civilizations, you know, full city societies. Um, and so this is what you're calling the inner earth council or these ones. Also underground are these, what we would call ETs, ETs from off planet that also come and live underground but they're not a part of the inner earth council. Um, so there's, so there's ET races. Okay, so those, so that's inner earth council. And then, so you have this set of the crystal skulls, which you have about 12 to 13. These, so for those of you, some of you may have watched our first episode with Carol, where we kind of introduced the crystal skulls. It's a fantastic episode you guys should check out where we talked about, so the skulls, um, you know, Carol kind of uses them as a focal point for these beings to come into. So the crystal skulls themselves have the crystal being because crystals are beings. We talked about that and really feel like that, that was my main takeaway from our last episode is these crystals, which I'm like holding some. Crystals have consciousness, life force, energy, you know, we consider them beings. They are consciousness, even though they're dense and they're vibrating slower than us. They're beings. Carol has these skulls that, you know, are made of a crystal, made of a certain element, which has its own frequency, its own consciousness. And Carol likes to use them as focal points. But beings also come into and can occupy um, and talk to her telepathically through the skull. So when she feels, okay, time for a meeting, or they say time for a meeting, so Carol will get out these 12, 13 skulls that have the vibrational frequency of the crystal being and these different inner earth beings that will come through and be able to talk to her, give messages. Sounds like they're doing energy attunements and upgrading the frequency so she refers to this group of 12, 13 skulls, which I think I could put a picture in. I'm going to see, would you be okay if I take that picture and try to drop it in here? Absolutely. Um, 
I think that'd be helpful. I'll see if I can edit, if I can figure out how to do that. So the skulls she refers to as the high council, which obviously is just a tiny, tiny fraction of, you know, the entire inner earth council. I'm sure is huge. But so she has the 12, 13 skulls, and then she gathers together humans, right? Other humans, which uh, there's 12 that she calls the round table. So this round table of a dozen humans get together, set out the skulls, which are these focal points for the inner earth beings to come through and meditate with them, talk with and receive these energy healings. And I guess probably receive assignments. I'm sure we're all like getting assignments and also that on a soul level, we're agreeing to do, right? It's not like they're, you know, it's never like you do this, you do this, but there's always an agreement. So, so just, yeah, because I was confused, like, what are all these groups? So there's the 12 human round table, and I'm sure there's these type of round tables all over the world too. Like I'm sure yours. Oh, absolutely. There's countless. Yeah. Countless numbers. Yeah. So yours is just, you know, the ones in, in Denver and the people kind of in your circle that you're aware of, um, that will have these meetings with her skull high council. And I'm sure there's other types, you know, of groups and round tables, maybe some use skulls, some don't, but it's all just about communicating with this inner earth council. Is that accurate? Perfect. Okay. You can even <laughs> need me to say anything. <laughs> no, it's gotcha. perfect. It's perfect. Okay. Perfect. Um, you have your own round table, but you're going to call it something else. Your four girlfriends that go out and hang out and camp or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. According to Ruku, there are countless round tables. That's the term I use. It's my human term. People are going to call it different yeah. around the world. It's varying levels of awareness of what they're doing and why they're doing it. But gotcha. absolutely, it is a full on movement of energy right now that's happening. They are reaching out to everyone that has had some agreement to help with this process. Yeah. Right? I've really been feeling the sense of urgency and importance of this. And again, I'm only just starting to become aware of the inner earth beings, but I've been in communication with Galactic Federation for three years, but I am, it's feeling more and more like this, almost like volcano, like, like the, just the urgency of we got to get this work done. Um, like it just, not like catastrophic but it's really it's like it's i feel it building up and welling up the importance of we really got to do this now we got to work together to heal the earth and raise the vibration of the planet and yeah so i'm sensing it too from galactic federation so it sounds like inner earth council also same time is really feeling this momentum and urgency Yes. And I think what people need to understand, at least from my terminology of it, is the IEC are all members of the Galactic Federation. So cool. even the ones that are related to that are star beings. So like I said, there are other dimensional beings that are part of the Inner Earth Council that are not off planet. But, mm -hmm. but so... For example, the Arcturians. I work with the Arcturian Urugu is the head IEC person I work with. She's a female. Arthur is considered to be an Arcturian. So they are also members of the Galactic Federation, right? So yeah. they're in constant communication with their folks up on the ship yeah. and back on Arcturus also. So um, it's just basically like where they're stationed. I that, see. If that sense. Yeah. Um, and so since like the Arcturians were involved at the very beginning, um, see. they they would be considered an IEC person, but also Galactic Federation. And I think you hit on it when you said how vast and large the IEC is. It really is because you may have a one ambassador, Arcturian ambassador that sits at the main IEC round table where the decisions are being made and and responsibilities delegated and assessments made and all that. 
But that Arcturian um, ambassador, like our embassies on the planet, on the surface of the planet, has a whole bureaucratic system of support behind it. Yeah. So if you are streamed and your frequency aligns with an Arcturian or the Arcturian's work that they're doing on the planet, they'll send you to the appropriate department. So <laughs> you, may, you, know, you may get in contact with somebody in department C503 because you're <laughs> going to be working on this specific thing and not necessarily working with the ambassador that sits at the main table, but they are going to connect you with the appropriate bureaucrat, if you will, to, to get you up to speed on what you need to be doing. And mm -hmm. that's what I am... The roundtables, Aruku wants to remind you, well, everyone, that um, these, what I refer to as roundtables is my term, call it whatever you want, I but um, they are organized many times by geographical location and by functionality. So uh. each group of people that get together on the planet, the earth, earthlings, if you will, have um, a certain frequency or are located in a certain place that is accommodating what the IEC and the Federation need to have done. So there's cool. all the arms based on frequency. So that's why, yeah. um, like I have a group of, of friends that are not part of this 12, but they are very much tied in with the inner earth beings and, and galactics. But their frequency is different than the, the group of 12. So we kind of do some stuff uh, on the side. So, and I think that, I mean, I think the people that you work with your portals, I think you'll find, or if you haven't already gotten the message that it's, you are alike in many ways and the frequency that's required mm -hmm. is, is very specific to where you're working. Um, that, you're the ones that can bring and heal and open and maintain that portal, that inner earth portal, because mm -hmm. first of all, that's how you're wired to do it. And that was your call to duty, if you will. Yeah. Um, nobody else could do that. Like another group from somewhere else wouldn't be completely wired correctly to open that specific portal, yeah. but very qualified to open another portal somewhere else. Yes. Because that is based on their functionality and their geographical location. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Now this, I feel like since we're talking about portals now, you know, you'd mentioned that you were building a portal in your backyard. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that and how you created it and what you're hearing the purpose is of your portal. And so for me specific, specifically, um, you know, I have a group of four group of four, I'd, we don't have a name. We don't have a name yet, Roundtable. Um, but yeah, so there's- We'll come up with something amazing. Well, yeah, we'll come up with something amazing. Um, but it, yeah, like like you said, it's just like spirit led me to this piece of land where there was a portal and I was just intuiting, okay, there's a portal here. So there, there's two portals on the land now. Um, the first one. one, I it was already there, but it was clogged, and I was guided to go there and just to start to open it up. And I, you know, like you said, the artery, it totally felt the same way of like this artery has been clogged, and no one's been able to pass through it. No beings, no energy, nothing. And I'd done several healings. This was actually around the same time you were saying your portal opened up in February and okay. you're feeling this sense of energy. It was around the same time. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It was around the same time. Um, I opened up, you know, it's funny. I feel like this stuff is all connected because I felt this sense of urgency. I wasn't actually going to be down there until March and I was planning to just work on the portal in March. And I felt a sense of urgency. So in February, I went in energetically. I was a month ahead of time and cleared open this portal. And I remember it was actually, it was days afterwards, I had a channeling session with Lori. And she said, your high council had urgently requested to meet. It was like a weekend. I don't know if you remember this. It was a weekend 
And she said, everybody happened to be free and you all got together and it was urgent. And so Lori was telling me this and it was days, it was days after I opened my first portal. And then once it got opened, we started to see a second portal being created. We were watching it, you know, through meditation, watching the second portal be created on the land. Um, and it, the second portal connects, you know, and my friend and I were both separately watching it and saw the same thing that it connects to the center of the earth. So down into earth where inner earth beings are, and I didn't even know, but it connects to the center and it like plugs into the central sun. And I was watching this beam of light go out. And I'm like, what is this? Where does it go? And I kind of follow it out in my meditation plugs into central sun. And I said, I don't even know what the central sun is, but I'd heard of it. And I was just intuiting then as I was kind of feeling it out that the central sun is just this high vibrational, super, super, super high vibrational, like close to source energy sun. So it had plugged in. And now we have this second portal, which goes to inner earth. So now we have this land where we have a galactic portal and an inner earth portal. And so it's just like, hmm. <laughs> Very busy train station here. Very busy. And, you know, they're within walking distance of each other. And it all just fell in our laps, you know. So some really interesting stuff coming up for us. <laughs> well, I'm, they're showing me that, that the reason those portals are so close, because it's like, um, you know, like the International Space Station. This is a, it's a transfer ground. It's, it's for off planet coming in to transfer stuff to inner air, bringing stuff out and taking up. It's so a it transfer is, station. There you go. I mean, that's what they're telling me right now is that's what that is used for. And it's, um, and it's because of your high vibe and it's because of who you four are that they entrusted you to to clear and help be stewards of this land because they really needed to have a transfer station that was safe for them that wouldn't get shut down that wouldn't get corrupted um because it's so easy to corrupt energies the land yeah. energy right just by through our even our own human emotions that we embed into the ground through our earth star chakra so yeah that's what you guys have done for them it's huge because uh -huh. it's it, what they're showing me is that it's like it's it's an efficiency thing. It's like so much more efficient and they don't have to be sort of on higher guard to not be seen, to not be heard or felt or shut down or monitored that they are and they feel very they're telling you they feel very safe um, in what in the, what you've done for the land and they can really they can really move and and get their job done a lot quicker. Wow. So that's that's, that's awesome. amazing. Yeah. yeah like I, it's a great picture. It's another sci-fi oh, movie. Yeah. After, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I hadn't, you know, we kind of, we've just, we've been doing a lot of work on the land and on the portals that I hadn't stopped to think of the big picture of them being connected, you know, cause we've done, I mean, it started a year ago where we were just doing energy work on the land itself, you know, just doing grid work. Um, it was my first time doing grid work and I just intuited how to do it. My friend and I went down there and she works more with the land and more, she wouldn't use the word shamanic, but it is more shamanic, you know, with tobacco, oil, with frankincense and myrrh, you know, praying into the oil, praying in the, into the tobacco, going to the eight points of the land, praying well, I would simultaneously do energy work. And so we created and it actually became a wheel. So we would do a center point in it and it would start spinning. And it almost looks like a washing machine, you know, it's spinning, sure. sometimes it goes back a little bit. So it just started to clear out that area and, you know, clear out its purging negative and it's bringing in light and flow and movement. Um, and then I would go in a lot and just monitor it, make sure it's clear. And every time spirit would show me new things to do and it became so strong. Um, and then we also, 
I mean, there's so many things that we've done. Like we, so for you to be seeing it safe, yes, we've done so much. I've done a lot more clearings. You know, we've we've gone to the portals. We do ceremony and prayer, and we've buried crystals and just so much prayer to create a safe space. Before we even knew the portals, we just knew we have this piece of land where no one comes. And we just wanted to create a safe space for anyone, everyone, animals, nature, spirits, trees. And now we have these two portals, <laughs> which you're telling us is a trans, and it makes so much sense. But our whole intention has just been to create a sanctuary. So it's so amazing to hear you say they're saying they feel safe and protected there. That is the covenant. That is the Shambhala. That was the origination. You have created a micro Allah in that land. That's what you've done because not only have you um, appeased and cleared the portals for the, the off planet and inner planet galactics, you're making it so safe for all the realms of Gaia. And that's what Gaia what it that's the whole yeah so you you've just made a microcosm of what wow. the original that's what they're telling me of, of what the original covenant was all about wow you restored it yeah and it's so funny you know how or at least the way that i've been learning to pray you never quite know what's gonna come out of yourself it's kind of like there's stuff in your heart you know sometimes you're praying for help sometimes you're praying for blessings but every time, you know, we would go into such deep prayer for this land and mine would always be, this is a sanctuary. This is a place for all people, all beings to come in unity and harmony and to be safe and for healing. And it always just became, I, you know, just speaking out about the unity and the oneness. And here's a place for us to gather and to meet and to love and to share with each other. And, you know, we didn't... We didn't know any of this, you know, there was no plan. It was just little by little over the last year. Um, and I'm and really, what? I'm really hoping to meet them physically, you know, like, I, do you see that? Are they telling you? Cause I know you have a portal and I want to hear about your portal. Are they coming physically? Um, well, I asked, I asked Arupu that, Arupu that I said, um, when will we see you or when will people start seeing you? Then her response is, People can see us now if they really believed what they saw. That they're now what they're what she said is um, it's been difficult for humans to see them, and it's been difficult for them to show themselves to us because of the uh, dimensional frequency differences. So remember how we were talking mm -hmm. at the beginning, how like humans kind of fell in their frequency. We lowered our frequency, yeah. yeah. And so the galactics and um, other light beings are like kind of up here. Mm -hmm. well, through this ascension process we're going through, we're like getting a little bit higher and a little bit higher, higher as a collective. Yes. There are individuals on the planet who, what she said is those individuals that can maintain and sustain a 5D or higher frequency. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the whole, she calls them the holy places. Um, that is your best chance of seeing them. So you have created a holy space in Texas, in, in the yeah. place of where you are. He sa also says that in uh, dream time and meditation, humans are able to kind of jump, step out of their 3D physicality and move more in the astral planes with their causal bodies. Yeah. <clears throat> and they can connect with you that way. So even though you can't physically touch them how humans want to be touched mm -hmm. uh, through meditation and through dream time you are in fact communicating with them now yeah. what they did say to you which they kind of enjoy doing um they kind of chuckle uh is they can manipulate physical artifacts to show us that they're here yeah so you could see that and sasquatch will do that a lot too and the fey will do that a lot too so if you see i have been i will go on my walks in the in the woods that i go in and occasionally a couple of times i've seen sticks um that are making the letter a and the first thing i think of is arthur oh so, but 
but she shows me that when she tells me this, she shows me that reference. So she says, we can manipulate physical uh, artifacts on your planet to let you know that we're here and to try to communicate with you. So people like to look at the clouds. You can connect in your heart space with the galactics and ask to show messages and start looking at the clouds. People will have, um, they said, she says, um, the electronic glitching is really popular. Yes. So mm -hmm. the glitching or the time or things like that happens, they can manipulate that pretty easily. Um, toning, it, it's the toning people will hear or they will hear sounds clear audiently. They can communicate that way with you too. But it's not that they don't want to show themselves. It's just that it's hard on them. And yeah. there's also still, so how she said, we're working really, um, we're working very, uh, fervently, 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 thank you, fervently <laughs> with those quote unquote believers, our foot soldiers. We're really trying to get their attention and make them feel very comfortable on what they're doing and to know that they're, that we're real. Um, and that's how. That's how they are going to get the word out about their existence. Because I asked about this mass showing, you know, everyone says full disclosures right around the corner. And she's like, I'm not seeing that being any time. There's nothing on the, on the plate with that. There's no time set time for that because humanity is so crazy. She didn't say that. I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. But her giving me this impression that you guys are just all over the board. You know, one day yeah. you're all very, very happy. Next day y'all want to kill each other. Yeah. And so there's so much fear being wrapped up. It's like mass appearance is not going to benefit anybody. Yeah, that could just she, cause more fear. Yes. Yeah, so more they're, chaos. They're working with individuals and groups of people so that they can um, be comfortable. And we all have our groups of people that believe us and think of us as authorities or trust us because we've known them a long time. And we start talking about our experiences. And then yeah. I'm like, okay. And so she shows me like um, a, a spider plant. You know, you have the mm -hmm. spiders that grow. But that's how they're getting everyone to know who they are is this kind of aspect of take the main spider plant, which would be like you and I, and we yes. start talking to our friends. And then they become a little spider plant that comes off yeah. and then that fire plant. So that's how that's how she's indicating they're working right now. She also said that there are going to start to be um she said there are because I was putting it in, in future tense. She said there are already but they're not out on a mass scale yet. Pictures that will be circulated um oh. for humans to see that are not AI generated. So she said, you have to be very careful with what you're looking at because they're, they're not, um, their purpose is, their purpose is not to instill fear. It's their purpose is to instill mm -hmm. hope. So based on the pictures that you see and the tone of that picture mm -hmm. or the TikTok video or whatever they're showing, if you're like, oh my God, oh my God, we're being invaded. We're being, that is not real. That is not them. That is not the message. But she said there will be, there are pictures being circulated now that um, are to help humans believe that they are really here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything I'm trying to say is if there's anything else that she wanted. That she says that she, she says that there, there are galactics on the property. They're there. Uh, she said that, okay, I don't know. But she's saying that either you or some of you or all of you feel that you are not worthy to see them at this point, that you still have some more work to do or more healing to do or, and she's mm. like, if you were called to do this work, you are already in the vibe that we need you to be in. She's like, none of us are perfect. We all have our flaws too. Um, um, she, she's making some sort of like little friends to someone she had a little human with over there, you know, <laughs> like how we do. Um, but she's like, none of us are perfect. And what the one thing with humans is we just don't trust what we see a lot of times. Um, mm -hmm. And that you will see them. They're able to bring their vibration down enough and you are able to bring your vibration high enough where there is tender common ground. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, you guys, you know, humanity is pretty much here. Here's the galactics. You guys are up over here. So the, the gap between that jump, that yeah. dimensional jump that has to be done mm-hmm. uh, between people that are high vibing um, on holy lands, if you will, uh, is much easier to do than you think it is. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just a matter of really trusting and believing what you're saying is what she's saying. So, yeah, I don't know if that helps or doesn't help, but that's what she told me. Um, it, the key yeah. ingredient again is being able to sustain a higher vibration. So that means no fear. Mm-hmm. That means no distrust, no anger, that kind of stuff. And to be drawn to areas that you know are holy or blessed, sacred, sacred Mm -hmm. space um, that have been cleansed from the corruptive energies of humanity. Yeah. And that's that's people's best chance of seeing them. Yeah. Wow. Feel safe to interact. It's incredible. And so you also have created a portal in your backyard. Have you been doing like the cleansing and... I'm sure with your crystals and everything, you already have a safe space. Um, So it was, um, I decided that it was on May, it was around the middle of May. I decided I had put together an arch trellis to have my trumpet vines grow on. So it's an arch. And I'm sitting in the backyard. I'm going, oh, what the hell? I have nothing else to do. Why don't I just make a portal? Thinking to myself, that just would be a fun thing to do because I have nothing else to do kind of thing. So... I decided I was going to do this portal. And all of a sudden I start getting these messages from Aruku than what I needed to do. So yes, I ended up, um, there's crystals set up and gridded to protect the space. That symbol I showed you earlier, I actually put it on two tiles with little crystals. I glued them onto that shape. So I put that in the middle of the, of the trellis also. Um, and then I did my, okay, this is it. This is all it, blah, blah, blah. And then you could, you know, people feel the energy. And I had an open house a couple of weeks ago with my, <laughs> and so we took several people through it and they were like, oh yeah, I can, you know, feel blah, blah, blah. And when we were done, um, well, actually before the open house, Aruku told me there we're sending scouts up to check out the portal and to see how it's going and stuff. So I knew that beings were coming out and looking. I didn't see them with my physical eyes and they were, it appeared, my impression was they were doing it at night because we have dogs behind us and the dogs uh, are into their dead energy. Mm-hmm. So um, after the open house, we had several people we took back there to show them. Um, and she's like, oh, we need to do a little more work on that portal. <laughs> <laughs> This is interesting because I had thought two of my skulls carry dragon energy and they etherically stand guard on this side to watch um, on both sides coming in. I know on the other side, um, there are guardians that watch who comes through the portal that way. Hmm. But this was so interesting. She's like, you humans have um, in our physical being, you know, we're covered with bacteria, right? We always have these microorganisms all over us and inside our body and around us, but we, we're fine. We, it doesn't bother us because that's just part of our yeah. symbiotic relationship. Um, we also apparently have something similar to that on an energetic level, that we have like little critter things that we're just, this is just how humans operate. Mm-hmm. So the way the portal was set up, when a human would walk into it, they were also bringing these like little critter things, which is <laughs> to us, yeah. but it's not harmless to them. It's an irritant bacteria. <laughs> yes. Like shit. She's uh. like, yeah, well, we didn't think of that. So um, we had to go in and we programmed some crystals and we chose an aspect of self, like in another dimension that could, that could, that was really connected with the IEC and understood what they needed physically on that side. And so we were able to program that into the crystals. And then we like set up these art, we set up energetic arches along the arch and we imagined them to be like cheesecloth. Do you know what cheesecloth is? Yeah. 
So you would pour like stuff through it and it catches all the junk. So <gasps> we have a lot of bacteria. So what a human can walk in, but they leave the junk back. I'm like, okay, that sounds that sounds good. Yeah, so your group kind of had, like you said, by geographical location and functionality, have your own kind of mission that you were all brought together to do for the healing of the earth, raising the vibration, or as you said, restoring this covenant, which is really getting back to the vibration of love and peace and unity and nonviolence is what I would say. So all of us kind of in our own ways have work that we're being called to do and we're finding each other. (laughs) We're finding each other in our groups around the world, being given tasks in all different ways to raise the vibration right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I know what Lori's gotten is uh, there are tunnels all over the inner earth that connect all the different civilizations to each other. So again, you've got these super highways kind of running through to get to the main council council chambers, but they're Mm -hmm. also spreading out throughout the planet. And so I've been told that your transfer station is part of that Um, super highway under the earth too. It's like this great unloading area that they can get stuff to anywhere in the planet because of that space and what, and how it's connected to that underground super highways that they have oh wow it's amazing (laughs) it's been so fascinating to learn about all of these different civilizations and the council council. and i feel like i even have more questions but we should wrap up because we're almost at two hours oh god okay yeah i feel like we should wrap up but i mean i'm curious because i know you've been down especially to the asian temple it sounds like a lot i mean i have questions like what is it like? What does it look like? Do they have sunshine? You know, like how do they get like their water and their food and their research? I mean, I have so many questions. I don't know if you can answer that quickly or if we would need well, to they, do. They use the technology at the bottom. They use uh, the fissures, uh, the cracks in the earth's surface where fissures and heat come up. They're able to use thermal energy to provide all the oxygen, machinery that they need to breathe in there, to purify water. Um, they do have, which I've not been, I've not seen that part of it, but they are able to grow their own food. The, there is natural light that comes in from the top, top of, of the, the top of the, um, of the city, but the lower city there, it, it's lit. You can see, and that's all using thermal energy. And they do, they do, many of them do go to the surface, um, and they do go out and they can breathe water too. Mm-hmm. Some of the animals are down there, so... They, they can get food if they eat that, they eat food on the planet. Like yeah. they do, they can get out. Some of them eat the fish and the algae and those things. They can go in and out like that. It's just like us. It's only at the bottom of the ocean and way more cooler. And then what about, so like the Sasquatch and the other beings that aren't in the ocean, but are inside? Like I imagine it'd be really dark down there. Do they have a, like a sun or like light inside or do they all have... Like they can't see because it's dark. Like, how does that work? In the Asian temple or just in general? Just in general. Because like Um, the the Sasquatch, you said, were like the Rainbow Lake. Yes. So in the Rainbow Lake itself, it is on the earth. But the way there is a hole at the top of the cave, it's like this cave. And there's a hole in the top and it has all this like greenery that has grown over it. So you don't really know that there's this huge hole, but natural light can come in. So they can see, they do have natural light. It is darker, but mm-hmm. underneath where the the hole is, um, there is natural light. And Rainbow Lake itself fluoresces. So it does have that yes, like, light glow to it. And that's just that particular clan of how yeah. they live. Yeah. Oh. So would you say anyone that's watching this that wants to connect with inner earth beings, how would they go about doing that on their own? Um, What I'm hearing is if you are even drawn to watch this video and are curious and interested, you are already connecting with them. 
I think one of the reasons that I went through that tedious description of the time frame with you is yeah. to show that they, little by little, they're giving you little clues, but they don't want to blow your circuits. They watch you and monitor you to see where your belief systems are, what's going around you in your human life, so you can um, feel comfortable with expanding your awareness. So I would say uh, that they need to get quiet and to meditate would be the best thing. Or if they do well with dream time, to ask to be shown things in dream time um, and put parameters. If, if, they're, if you're still a scaredy, scaredy cat, um, to say, you know, I am human. I'm afraid of things that go bump in the night. So mm -hmm. maybe leave me clues during the day. Or that happens all the time when I have other dimensional beings that are communicating with me. There are certain things that they know to show me that I know that it's them. So you mm -hmm. can say whatever that is. Uh, mm -hmm. A yellow dog. Uh, white ball or whatever you know whatever it is but you can ask them it's remember they're they're higher dimensional beings so they can they they have a better feel for understanding our emotional body and our energetic bodies than we do yeah so they can see your level of fear and doubt and distrust yeah. and they, they monitor that and they want you to be safe and comfortable with this so mm -hmm. uh, you can help Set parameters, right? Say meditation and pay attention. If you don't want to be bothered at night in dreams, pay attention during the day mm -hmm. to the littlest clues. Um, and then you'll see them repeating. Like, she saw it, she got it. Mm -hmm. She's thinking, well, could it be? Let's do another one. Um, I think that that would work too. That's what I'm understanding. Yeah. And so I'd say, you know, I'd encourage all of the viewers that are watching this to reach out. You know, we're all feeling this sense of, importance, urgency right now for all of us to work together. And we all have different gifts. We all have different abilities. Like you said, we're all in different geographical locations where we might be called and, you know, need what you can do in your city and your area. Um, so I definitely encourage you guys, you know, if, if this is all resonating with you to reach out and we really need all the help we can get on the planet right now to raise the vibration and heal. And of course, continuing to do your own inner work because each of us that collectively heals a part of ourselves helps raise the vibration of the planet. But from what Carol said at the beginning, it sounds like now the time really is critical. It's like I've, I'm feeling just the sense and hearing like now or never that we got to change the course of the planet and how cool to get to connect to inner earth beings or if you're, you know, into galactic federation it's for us all to collaborate and work in the ways that we're called to. Like I never imagined I'd be doing energy healings on land and clearing portals and now doing all these interviews, but it's my way and Carol has her way and we all, have our own ways that we can contribute to this. So now's the time. So I just encourage you guys, it's go time. <laughs> it is go time. Yay. It is go time. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Lauren, again, for inviting me to speak. Yeah. Thank I you. Know, you know, my fear of speaking about this stuff publicly.